This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to first determine the number of terms in an arithmetic sequence, and we're going to explain what that means. In our second section, we're going to do our first example. And in our third section, we're going to do example two. Let's get started. So let's first figure out what this means to find the number of terms in a sequence. So what we're going to do is start with a sequence. So we'll say we have 7, 12, 17, 22, and let's say we know the last number is 262. So when we sp first speak about notation concerning sequences, we say that this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and we could separate these with, of course, commas. And what we want to do is figure out what term that is. So in other words, I don't know what that number is. So that's why we use the subscript n. And that's what these are, subscripts. They're not powers. So what we want to do is figure out what term number is this? Is this the 30th? Is it the 25th? All right, so that's the task ahead of us. And let's do some examples. Let's take a look at our first example. So let's say we start with this sequence. And we have some numbers. So far I've got four numbers in our sequence. And here's another number. This is the last number. So this sequence does not go on forever. It terminates at 35. What we want to do is figure out what term number is this. This is our first term, second term, third term, fourth term. What term is that? So there is a process for doing this. And in a previous video on arithmetic sequences, we explained how to come up with a formula that describes numerically describes this pattern. All right, well, first of all, let's talk about uh, what's the connection between numbers. Well, the connection between numbers we could find by taking the difference. If you were to subtract, take 1 minus negative 1, we would get 2. If we took 3 minus 1, we would get 2. 5 minus 3, we get 2, and so on. So we're going to assume that, of course, that this, which is called the common difference, is going to continue for the whole pattern in the sequence. All right, so what do we do? Well, uh, according to our last video, what we do is say that, well, we know the general formula is always going to be d times n plus some constant c. All right, so this is the formula. This is how they all work for arithmetic sequences. So we already know our d value. Our d value is 2. So I'm going to put that in. And what I want to do, of course, is figure out what C is, the constant that makes this formula work. So what I'm going to do is say, let's see, what's A of 1? Well, that means the N is 1. The C value we don't know. So all I did is I plugged in 1 for N into this formula. And we already know what A of 1 is. We already know the first term. The first term is negative 1. All right, so let's solve this for C. So let's see, 2 times 1 is 2. And we say what plus 2 is equal to negative 1? It's got to be negative 3. So if you subtract 2 from both sides, you'll get negative 3. All right, so now we know the formula that we're working with is known. We know that D is 2. And we now know the c value, right? The c value now is negative 3. So this is the function that we would use to describe every term along the way in this sequence. So what I want to do is figure out what term number this is. So what you're going to do is say set the function equal to 35. And now it'll allow us to solve for n, which is the term number. So if we add 3 to both sides, You're going to get 38. If you divide both sides by 2, you get 19. So now I know that this is the 19th term in the sequence, in this arithmetic sequence. All right, a lot of little steps there. 
Okay, let's try one more example. So for this example, I'm going to put this sequence of numbers up here. Let's see, we got negative 18, dot, dot, dot. And the last number in the sequence is negative 216. All right, so I've got these numbers up here. Uh, I want to see, is this an arithmetic sequence? And really easy to check. You find the difference between any consecutive numbers. So if I take negative 12 and I subtract negative 9, I'm going to get negative 3. If I take negative 15, if I subtract negative 12, I'm going to get negative 3. And again, another negative 3. Or in other words, if I take negative 9 plus negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus negative 3 is negative 15, and so on. So if I add negative 3, I can go from one number in the sequence to the next number in the sequence. All right, what I want to do is figure out what these term numbers are. Nope, oops, I can leave that in black. All right, so that's our first term. Second term, third term, fourth term. I want to figure out what term that is. So that's our nth term, and we're going to determine what that is. All right, so the way you do this is you say, well, the generic function that can be used to describe this sequence is always going to be your d value. And by the way, that's the common difference that we calculated here. So the common difference is negative 3. So you take your d value times n plus some constant. And that's the function that's always going to work to generate the numbers in this sequence. All right, well, uh, we know a little something about this. We know that our d value is negative 3. We know that our first number, right, the first number in the sequence is equal to negative 9. Or in other words, n is equal to 1. And we don't know the c value. Well, we do know the first term in the sequence is equal to negative 9. So this equation is going to allow us to solve for the constant c. Okay, so let's calculate. So negative 3 times 1, negative 3. If I add 3 to both sides, I'm going to get negative 6. All right, what does that mean for us? It means now our specific formula is going to be d, n, and our c value is negative 6. Okay, so this is the function now that we know that we could use to describe this. So, and it, and it does work. If I put in 3, I get negative 9, right? 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 6 is negative 15. Okay, so this function can be used to determine any term along in our sequence. Well, we want to figure out what's the term number for this negative, 100, uh, negative 216. So we'd say, all right, let's put the negative 216 right there. And let's use this function to solve for n. Okay, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. If I add 6, I'm going to get negative 210. To solve for n, I'm going to divide by negative 3. And I'm going to get 70. So now we know that this is the 70th number in this arithmetic sequence. And that's how you do it. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our instructional videos. Take care.